and it says we are streaming. Hey, everybody, if you can see us, this is Tracy with TRCast, and, and I have Michelle with Leather Cord USA, and we're just checking things out to see if we're actually live yet. So give us a second. There it is. All right. You Looks see like us we're yet? live. Yeah, I see us. We're live. Awesome. Hi, Michelle. Now we'll just be still fussing with our computers for a minute while we share to <laughs> pages we need to share to. So let's see. We are, we set this up, Michelle and I set this up. Um, share to a group. Um, as part of the Mojo 2 um, Facebook group, there we're focusing on um, crafty type of stuff for National Craft Month. So that's why Michelle and I um, decided to get together and do a, do a demo together. So, um, because we've been, we've known each other for a long time and our companies have like shared product and, and um, collaborated on projects for a very long time. So it made perfect yeah. sense, right, Michelle? Always, always. Our yeah. products work so well and we love each other. <laughs> yeah, friends, we should be drinking a beer together right now. I know, it's a little too early for that. It is a little early. <laughs> But that is sort of our usual thing when we mm -hmm. see each other at shows and stuff. Yes. Um, so let's give it a minute and see if a few more people pop in. And, and um, there was something else I was going to ask you right off the bat, Michelle, and I forgot already. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll come back. Yeah. But what we've got planned for everybody is, um, as I was saying, we had this National Craft Month, Month focus with the Mojo 2 group. And so the challenge was to think outside of the jewelry box and try to come up with some demos that were not necessarily jewelry. So um, Michelle had a great idea. I was probably less imaginative. So what we're dem demoing here, for me, I'm gonna demo this purse charm. So it's got, it's got product from almost all of our, um, almost all of our Mojo 2 um, vendors, which is us, Tierra Cass, it's Michelle, Leather Cord USA. It's Beadalon, Impress Art, Dakota Stones, and Jesse James Beads. So my project has um, everything except a stamped piece. <laughs> yeah. I got you covered on the stamp piece. There you go. <laughs> Wonderful. And what I'm going to be showing is a dream catcher. Um, sorry, I don't have a good background to kind of see through that there, but it's a dream catcher and it uses all the companies again, uh, Beadalon, Tiercast, Dakota Stones, Jesse James Beads, Impress Art, and of course, Leather Court USA. I was like, who am I forgetting? <laughs> but we'll be going over just a few of the techniques to create your own dream catcher. Yeah, and it's so imaginative. I think there's leather covering the whole, uh, covering the loop and, and everything else, huh, Michelle? Yeah, so I used uh, leather to cover the sides. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how I use, how I made the loop. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a very traditional way to do a dream catcher, but I kind of use leather to wrap the edges and then tassel it on the end and so on and so forth, so. Cool. Um, um, leather, just I was thinking earlier on that I wanted to talk about um, how we responded to um, just the strong, strong like leather cord trend that we started seeing, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. and, um, we started thinking we need to make products that work with leather. And that's when we started like getting in touch with you and talking with you and started, we started making all of our large hole components that would work with leather cord. And it yeah. became a real strong focus for us. So, so we do have a whole little section on our website um, mm -hmm. called Leathercraft, I think is what we call it. Julie's here with us too. She'll be piping in if she sees questions or comments that would be good to respond to um, while we're streaming. Um, and she'll post some links too. Um, yes. So we do have this whole section inspired by leather and inspired by Leather Cord USA. So um, it's cool. 
We've done I a just, lot. And Michelle, I was wearing yeah. this necklace a couple of weeks ago on a Facebook Live, and everybody just went crazy about it. So I decided to wear it again because, again, it's full of leather cord stuff. And I, I did. I did love this, that piece. Yeah, I did the, get this up on the website too, so now people can actually um, see what's in it. And um, <clears throat> I'll be loading up a PDF that they can download later today. So. That's awesome. I can't wait to check it out. I mean, I definitely, when I saw that piece, it was just so stunning. And the way you used buttons as basically the little charms throughout and the way you tied the leather onto the larger piece, it's stunning. So I just, I absolutely love the way our leather works with your components and your components work with our leather and especially like the larger um, caps as well, how those just fit right onto some of our bigger leather products. So mm -hmm. we'll probably need to have a good conversation um, sometime soon about more recent trends and see where else we can be, um, we can be innovating product. So, Definitely. but we probably have like an hour and um, I don't think my demo will take that long, but we probably, I mean, it won't take an hour, but maybe 20 minutes. Okay. So um, I think we should get started so we don't run out of time. Let's do this. Because yours okay. looks complicated. It's a bit complicated, but I'm going to try to just step by step it out and mm -hmm. not really go through each component. So <laughs> I'll do I'm my gonna, best. I'm going to switch to speaker view and then I'm going to switch to um, my, my work surface. Perfect. Get started. Nice. Oops, all done. I'm on speaker view, but I was on, um, on you, so that's where we are. <laughs> okay, come on now. All right, let's switch to speaker view. Showing, it's just going back to your screen. How strange. I might have to hide you. Okay, you can hide me. That's fine. <laughs> come on now. Spotlight for everyone. There we go. Spotlight function. Forgot about that. Nice. Okay, so what I've got is um, just a cute little purse charm, which could also be used for, as a key ring, you know, anything that you want to just dangle something pretty off of. So I have one of our largest lobster clasps, and I have two Jesse James beads. I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to use for this version. I have one of our... Um, uh, gosh, what do we call these? Stitch around hoops? We call these stitch around hoops. This is the larger one. I've got some of Bead Alon's um, multicolor wire, which is just so fun to use. And I got a little chain. I got one of our six millimeter temple um, uh, cord ends. And I, on this original one, I put one of our intermix uh, pendants on there, but I pulled out a whole bunch of our different bigger pendants and I'll, I'll decide on the fly which one I'm going to add to it. Um, I did want one of our bigger ones, so oh, so picked up some good ones. And then I have a couple of um, uh, Dakota Stones amethyst drops. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is make the upper section that connects to the... Um, connects to the lobster clasp. So I'm just gonna cut maybe four inches of wire. I don't think I need more than that. Um, and I think the first thing I'll do, this isn't something that's on the website. Um, so I've, of course I've made it, but I didn't have my instructions to print out to follow along. Um, didn't think I would need to do that. I made this specifically for this live stream event. So I, like I said, I don't have it on, uh, on the website. But the first thing I'm gonna do is just um, attach this stitch around hoop to um, the piece of craft wire with a wrapped loop. And then I'll string on one of the bead caps. These ones are our open poppy. They're really nice and big. They're about 12 millimeters. And you guys already saw me pick this up. So I'm totally leaning towards this one today. And then string on the second, second bead cap. And 
And then I'll start my second wrapped loop and string on the loop of the lobster clasp before I finish that wrap. And which this um, particular color of the uh, multicolor wire is the pink, black, green. It's really fun, and I think it will look good with the um, amethyst drops. That is a really good use of our lobs biggest lobster, Tracy. Yeah. That is really nice. I just love how quick you can go at making the loops and putting all the components together. <laughs> yeah, so that's it, the first part. Now, um, I was having fun with um, tassel ideas, Michelle. Mm -hmm. So I was using some of our different components. For the original one, I used our Tempo six millimeter. Yes. And um, then I was playing around with other materials of yours that I had in hand. So I had some of your regular three millimeter suede Mm -hmm. I had some of the, I always mix this up. Is this deer tan or deer skin? Deer skin. And what's the difference between um, that and your regular suede? So the deer skin and deer tan both have a top grain. So they're a top grain hide. Um, suede products are gonna be suede on both sides. Okay. Um, so, so it's gonna have a different texture. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's very much softer. And mm -hmm. much, I love it. And then I also had a little fun with some one millimeter cord. I love that. Yeah, um, but I my question the about the suede is, you know, it, it it's very springy. Is mm -hmm. it okay to dampen this? If, how would you straighten this out if you wanted to straighten it? You know, the best way to do it, don't dampen it because you would ever want to expose, expose leather to, um, to water. Um, ideally, you don't want to. I mean, it can withstand it to an extent. But the best thing to do is to stick it under a book or inside pages of a book. And that will just kind of help flatten it. Um, and keep it where you want it to go. But it does, it will relax with time. So that's the thing is all leather will have some kind of memory to it, but it will relax with time. Oh. Hey, Michelle, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I got you. Okay, it looks, it looks like we kind of cut off for a minute. Oh no, where I did I leave off? <laughs> I think we're back now, if I can get us back to the speaker view. Spotlight. There we were. Hey, Julie, did we go away for a minute? You sure did. Okay. Right. And you I know me, I was panicking and my <laughs> usual go to emotion. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. I think where I was is I was ooing and awing over the different um, materials, Michelle, and I was asking with the suede, you know, it can be so springy. Um, mm -hmm. How how can you straighten that? Is it okay to dampen it? It is not. I mean, I would not suggest um, adding water because it is a fibrous product. All leather is fibrous, so it's going to absorb water and it can and change the color. It ah. changes the color and it deteriorates the hide itself. So what I would suggest doing is laying it under a book or something heavy for a little bit but uh -huh. it will relax with time like the longer that you have it um, in a straight line it's going to relax with time the more you play with it it's going to relax with time so. right that's what I was thinking is as long when it's obviously on the purse charm it's going to be mm -hmm. hanging vertically mm -hmm. so eventually it will just kind of relax downward yeah. And you can also use like a leather, a little bit of leather oil or lotion would help, you know, soften those fibers to help it break uh -huh. down a little bit. Just don't use too much because again, you don't want to change the color of the leather. Right. So. Okay, cool. Good to know. Um, so what I used for this, um, for this tassel was the new buck. Mm -hmm. But that's a little bit different than the suede too. It seems a little softer and, and it has the top grain. The top grain is actually bucked. That's why it's considered a new buck. So uh -huh. it's a new buck suede or new buck leather, where the top grain is actually buffed slightly uh -huh. to give it that buttery, soft feel. Yeah. So all three of those products are actually the same type of leather itself. Um, it's a however, different finish. Different texture, yeah, different um, finish to it and different treatment process, so. 
Okay, good to know. You know, yeah. you get you get curious. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna um, make a tassel right now. So I, again, I've cut about four or five inches of leather. And I'm going to wrap this. I've seen, you know, in my earlier attempt, I discovered that I can fit tuck six strands up into that um, oh, cool. up into that cord. And so, so in theory, this will work. <laughs> so I'm just going to coil those to make my tassel. Um, and then tuck that piece of wire up at the top side of the, the coil. Mm. And then I can either do, I can do one of two things here. Um, I can either thread both ends of my wire up through the, um, up through okay. the cord end, or I can go ahead and wrap one around here and then thread the single one up. And it really doesn't matter. This is nice if, if I was using something that was a little more loose inside the cord end, then securing it right here might be um, advisable. Mm -hmm. But since there, it's really going to fit up there nice and snugly, I don't think I need to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to thread them both up in there. There you go. And I'm going to take my uh, chain nose pliers and just pull the whole thing up in there. Perfect. And then I also am, I have a choice here too. With this one, I don't know if that's gonna show up very well, but I just wrapped both of the strands. I just used my round nose pliers and rolled them over and made a wrapped loop, but I could also um, wrap one end around and just use one strand to make the wrapped loop, which apparently I made that decision while I was talking. So that's <laughs> what I'm gonna do. I uh, just wrap that a couple of times, trim it off. And then I'll use my round nose pliers to make a wrap loop. And I want to re I have to remind myself if I attached it directly to the bottom of the charm or if I used a jump ring. And I used a jump ring. So I can go ahead and make my wrap to loop. Oh, perfect. I didn't even think of doing a jump ring onto that. That's perfect. Yeah. Very nice. All right, and I did give myself some jump rings to work with, right? I did. <laughs> Isn't that always the case? You always find, oh wait, I forgot one thing, but yeah. look, you're all prepped. <laughs> um, in terms of bigger, whoops, Bigger leather cords, Michelle, what are the most popular sizes? I mean, obviously we have six millimeter cord ends and we have eight millimeter cord ends. Um, yes. You know, it, should we have a five millimeter? Five millimeter is extremely popular. I would yeah. suggest jumping on five, especially right now for some reason. And I keep on saying for some reason, it is just the trend where mm -hmm. larger leather is much more popular. Um, it's kind of like what I'm wearing today is a four millimeter. Just having that bigger, more substance, I guess, is um, becoming mm -hmm. super popular. So having those cord ends available, plus the beauty of those cord ends is you can put multiple strands in them. So five mil would be ideal. Yeah. What about four? Four would be a good one too. Um, I'm seeing both of them being popular. Four, five, and six have just recently just been booming, which is great. You know, we we absolutely love seeing this trend kind of coming into play where the braided leathers are popular, the round leathers are popular. So yeah, having those sizes is, is a great idea. And, you know, having more options because when I mean, we sell a few end caps, but yours are just so beautiful and they really just add oh, so thanks. much extra to each design. So I would definitely yeah, you love know, to we, see some more of that. You know, we only recently have started um, producing our own cast bead caps, our cord ends. Bead caps we've always done. Mm -hmm. But for a while we carried some brass ones. So mm -hmm. um, we are just now, my light feels really low. I think I need to, I don't know how it is for you guys, but I can't hardly see. <laughs> <laughs> it looks um, okay on my end. Let's see if I can nudge my light around a little bit. Um, 
Oh, so what I was saying was that just opens up really a lot of design possibility for us that we can start just making our own Definitely. instead of instead of the brass ones we were using. So I'm obviously attaching some chain. Um, and I'm just going to go with kind of a longer piece and kind of a shorter piece. And again, I'm using some jump rings for that because that will be more secure than just using these. Um, this chain I'm using is an unsoldered chain. So there's an opening up at the top here at the end of the link, which, you know, if that takes a lot of pressure, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it could come open. So that's why I'm choosing to attach it with a jump ring. That's a great idea, especially if it's on if it's on a purse or something like that. You're going to maybe right. have a kid grabbing at it or whatever. Um, right. In my case, that would be the case. <laughs> my son would be grabbing all day long at that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and and the oval jump ring has an opening at the side, so it doesn't take that pressure at the end where the right. weight is. Yes. You know, case. honestly, never thought of that. I never thought that that's why it would be on the side. I like that a lot. I try to mention these things because people don't always think of it. Nope. I'm, I'm one of those don't think about it. <laughs> and now I know. The more you know. Yeah. That's why often it's um, uh, oval jump ring is a better choice than a round one. Oh, okay. So I got my tassel, got my chain. I need to wire wrap my little um, gemstones. So I was playing around with ideas of how I was going to do that. Since I'm not using a head pin, I could use a head pin, but I want to use this, the multicolored wire. So one of my techniques for, for that is I can either make a little sort of head pin coil at the Ooh. end, or I can do some decorative wrapping, which I'm really not that good at. So oh, that looks I so think, pretty. Are you kidding me? I know. <laughs> this one is pretty. It's a little bigger. I yeah. guess it would look good on there. It's kind of big. It is a little bit big, but it looks, it's so nice. Like that would look awesome on it just as a necklace or a pendant. Yeah. So gosh, which to do? I think I will try that, but I can't promise it'll be pretty guys. I'm winging it every time I do that. So I'm, I've got a piece of wire. Maybe I should have cut one slightly longer since I decided to do it this way. But as long as I have about an inch at the end, I can make my loop. Mm -hmm. um, up at the up at the top end. So I'm going to fold up the other one and just start kind of winding it around my stone. Mm -hmm. What gauge are you using there? I think you may this, have mentioned, but I may have missed it. This is the 22. I did not mention what, okay. what it was, and it's a 22. Nice. So I just there are really people who do this much better than me, but you know, I think you're doing great. <laughs> it's forgiving. And with this one, when I was done with it, I just took my pliers and kind of put some wiggles in the wire to mm -hmm. make it uh, a little more interesting. That's a demo for another day, I think. <laughs> and I really did not give myself quite enough wire, but it'll be okay. I think you got that there, yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as that's wrapped around a little bit, <clears throat> should be all right. Trim off your little ends. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pliers can kind of put some wiggles in the wire. Tell me. Somebody's Facebook is not muted. <laughs> <laughs> Might be me because I'm having trouble. So let me. Okay. Uh -oh. now I'm okay. Now I'm. Well, muted. it's not causing any feedback, so. Uh -oh. No, I lost. Okay, I'm back. I lost uh, the messages. Uh, and now I'm back. Okay. Do we have any fun messages yet, Julie? I'm looking. <laughs> Some of the best re creations come from winging it. Yes. Yes, Agreed. for sure. Agreed. Mm -hmm. That is basically my whole design is winging it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so I got my little wrap done. Now I'm when I do if I do this, the mm -hmm. chain wigglies, I want to be very gentle because I don't want to I don't want to scratch up the wire. Mm -hmm. And ideally, 
ideally I would have um, some of that, you know, there's this material you can dip your tools in. There's, oh. I think there's a couple different kinds and it just um, puts a soft coating on the edge of your tool so that oh. it doesn't scratch things up, but that doesn't look too bad. That looks great. And you know, also I, I learned that when you do that, that also helps tighten the wire yes. onto the piece. So yes, I I've seen Wyatt white actually. <laughs> I learned it from Kate Richburg. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Good minds in the jewelry making industry. I'm telling you, I love them all. I love learning okay. so much from everybody. I'm going to put this one on the shorter piece. It's a little bit smaller. So I'm going to put it on the um, shorter piece of chain and I may adjust the placement at some point. All That's right, so <laughs> now my second one. This one is um, kind of top drilled so I can just yeah. thread it like that and make a wrapped loop. Yeah, so I made a, a wire wrapped bale. There you go. Yeah. And it's more of a rougher cut rock, right? Yeah. Natural cut. I love this one. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's so pretty. So to make a wire wrap bale, I'm just going to crisscross those wires up at the top. Try and give myself enough room to hold onto it with the pliers, but maybe I'm just going to wrap it with my fingers. No, going with the pliers. <laughs> so wrap that around at least once. And go with my wrapped loop again. Yeah. So have you been playing with any other fun des craft designs lately, Tracy? No, I do have the idea of doing um, a wine charm demo. Ooh. That would be because fun. that's yeah we have some products that will work really well for that and I think it would make a fun demo matter of fact maybe I'll just commit to doing that next week because um, we only have a couple more weeks left of National Craft Month and that would be a good one that would be really great I think that's and a great I think idea. we I think we have some old content that I can pull out of the archives and um and use for that oh that's awesome. I'll have to update it and get it onto the newer website, but yeah. There you go. All right, so there's my second gemstone. Oops. Oh, now wait a minute. I forgot to make room for this guy. So I know how I'm going to handle that though. And I'd be closing this jump, jump ring better if I was actually using my chain nose pliers instead of my round nose pliers. <laughs> that makes me crazy. <laughs> it was an accident, Julie. I didn't mean to pick that one up. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that bothers you, Julie? Nails on a chalkboard. Oh, really? That's fun. Well, not as bad as people opening them by hand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. That's so, so funny. That's something I never thought of. Like, that doesn't bother me at all. Well, <laughs> I always use the wrong tools. <laughs> Michelle. <Terrible. laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go with the little heart because I love it. And I'm going to hang that one down. asking, Tracy, what tool did you use to tighten the coil? What tool? Oh, um. I just used the front notch with some crimping pliers. That's one of my favorite little hacks for tight, for smoothing out a wrapped loop. Um, <clears throat> and you know, depending on what you're doing, but the small crimping pliers have a nice little round, that round. Oh. I wish I knew what the technical term of that front notch was. I just, I just say it's got C's on both sides. So mm -hmm. that, they make nice little hacks for smoothing a wrapped loop. It's a great idea. I'm learning so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But now I I'm, I lost track of what I was doing with. You were gonna put okay. the heart on. I'm putting the heart on at the bottom. I love that heart so much. Maybe. 
might need to use a bigger jump ring for that particular charm. I think I'll go with our... 0020. Yes, that's what I'm going for, Julie. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> Like I got the technical name for it here. That's great. That's better. I could use the 0019, Julie. Yes, you could. Sure. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> the 0019 is our larger oval. Oh, it's, gotcha. just, it's just it's the product number. Gotcha. Okay, so that's on. Don't know where that came from. What line is that heart from? That heart is from our Dulce Vita collection. Oh, yes. I'll put a link to that. One of my favorites. Yeah, that was such a fun, um, such a fun line to mm -hmm. develop around here. It was, it was really a, everybody was involved because this, the, um, we came up with all these texture samples mm -hmm. and we had to narrow down. There was just so many and we had to narrow down which ones we were going to actually um, produce. Mm -hmm. And so we had these big meetings where practically the whole company was just picking and going, no, I like this one. No, 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 this is better. <laughs> and um, it was just a really fun process. And, uh, and we really ended up loving the line. Yeah, that was, I Tracy. really do love that line. Yes. Yeah, Julie. Sure about it being in a uh, pewter antique? Oh, um, one of the, the things that th the determination we made was because we wanted it to have a fairly rustic feel. Mm -hmm. um, so the finishes we produced it in was is our pewter antique, which is it's not a plated finish. It's just um, pewter that's lacquered. And so it's a little bit darker and a little bit, bit more rustic. And then we also produced it in our antique brass. Uh -huh. So um, this we have project actually... you're doing is so excellent, though, to show people how well it works mm -hmm. with a bunch of the. I think you've got rhodium plate there and silver antique yeah. and the pewter all going on in that. Yeah, I'm. I'm not completely happy with how long the chain ended up being for the charm, so I'm going to add a little bit more length of chain, and I can do that because it's an unsoldered chain. And then I really want to finish up, Michelle, so you have enough time for yours. <laughs> You're good. I'm just enjoying watching this. I may not be as um, detailed as you while showing my That's demo, okay. so I apologize I, in advance. <laughs> no, no, I just don't want you. I mean, our focus today was to show people some fun with fringe and, and, uh, yeah. and tassels. So, exactly. whoops, what am I doing? Oh, I just want to close that. And then I want to cut this off, maybe here. Is that going to be good? Maybe there. <laughs> That's how I measure too. Yes. I like it there. It's very, very specific. Yeah, not. I'm really good at that. I, people make fun of me all the time about my measure once, cut twice. <laughs> uh, no, it's more like a guess once, cut once. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I always correct it somehow, and I manage to we, make it work. We don't necessarily recommend that. This don't do this at home, guys. Don't follow Michelle's lead. <laughs> do what we say, not what we do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so that's it, guys. I, I uh, love that. Nobody, while nobody was looking, I added. I'm trying to get it laid out so you guys can see the details. While no one was looking, I added that little sparkle as a mm -hmm. touch over on this um, other chain. And, oh, and I'm all done. Woo. Beautiful. I love it. All yeah, right. So just fun. You can hang that from, oh, you know, I was thinking, of course, purses and or key rings, but you could also, I could see it hanging from a rear view mirror. Oh, that would be neat too. And then like this, uh, all the, the stones and everything would pick up on the sunshine coming through uh -huh. or even in a window. Yes, for sure. Yes, that would be great. All right. Um, all right. So we're back on gallery view. And then once we once you are ready to go, we'll switch you to okay. the spotlight view. Let me just uh, move some stuff over here. And then we'll, what I'm gonna do is talk a bit about all the things and then go into it. So let me get you on my 
hands here. All right, so I got a spotlight you. There Here we, we are. Go. Perfect. All right. So um, playing with my camera. So everybody, I apologize in advance if it's a little bit blurry. Um, so basically, when I came up with this design to do the dream catcher, I just love dream catchers. I think leather goes great with dream catchers. So I was like, let me just figure this out. But I really wanted to incorporate everybody who's part of this mojo group. So I was like, okay, Beetle One has some of my favorite wire. And I used the exact same wires you did, Tracy. So I think great minds <laughs> think alike here. We didn't, we did not plan this, everybody. We did not plan this. <laughs> but I used their uh, multicolor wire as well. I used their, I believe it's their 18, no. I cannot remember what gauge. It's the heaviest? Yes. It's, I think that they did it in 18, 20, and 22. Um, so or at least that's what they sent us. Okay, so I'm pretty sure it's their 18 then that I'm using here. And so I just basically found something round, big enough, and that I, like the size I wanted and wrapped it and wrapped it and wrapped it around. Um, and then just kind of twisted the edges a bit, kind of like this, just to kind of make all those wires sit together. I think I used the entire um, entire spool that they sent. Oh, did so. you really? <laughs> I just loved it. I just kept on going with it because every time the colors interchanged, Oops. I just thought that was so beautiful. Boop, boop, boop. Sorry, Michelle. I got to mute this. Okay. okay, go. Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. Um, so after that, I was like, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to add this leather into here? So I wanted to wrap the sides. Um, as you can see here, like this is my little, not mess up area, but like where everything comes together. We'll kind of hide this in a bit. And then down here, I did the wrap with one millimeter round leather cord around the edges here. And I'll finish that off on this side. So you can see this is a different color that still plays off the same um, tone. So what I did is I took just the round leather cord, tied a simple knot right up here. And then literally just wrap as tight as you can throughout. So I'll just do a few more loops here. And just pulling it through. And Tracy, let me know if my camera does anything crazy, okay? This it's looking pretty good. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay, great. So I think, as you can see, just kind of putting enough pressure right here so you're holding that leather down. You don't want it to loosen up or else it will start spreading apart. So just mm -hmm. put enough pressure there, slide that into place. And then do, again, just do a simple overhand knot right in there. And this was just two meters. I just took it from a two meter pack and just uh, started playing. So you don't technically need the whole two meters um, to get to this point. But just Leftover up. leather is always good. I always, you could do so much with it. That's my favorite part. <laughs> All right, and so just tighten that in place. And just make sure everything is where you want it. I'll get this guy out of my way here real quick. We'll get back to him shortly. And then, yep, so then feels pretty nice and tight for me there. And then I'm just gonna trim it right here. All right, put that leather to the side. And then at this point, you're going to want to create that pattern, the weave in the center. So I decided to use a completely different color um, to kind of create that weave here. So I'm using um, another two meter pack and it's still one millimeter, but this is in our um, Aquatin. Gosh, I forgot the name of the, <laughs> the leather for a second there. Um, so I thought that played nicely off of this pretty green through here definitely the, the wires so you basically this is where you do what your heart desires um, I'm going to be adding some Dakota Stone's large gold beads in there and these gorgeous little seashells from tear cast oh yeah <laughs> our little um uh uh, uh cowrie shells is that what they're called I'm so good yes. with names yeah. <laughs> Well, it took me a minute to come up, and, and I work for the company that made it, so. <laughs> I know. That's so funny. <laughs> Isn't that always the case, though? So let yeah. me just put these in here. I'm going to open up my Dakota Stone Large Hole beads here. And these ones, I believe, are the Mixed Impression Jasper. So 
apologize. I'll just throw them in the center for the time being, and then we'll start our looping process. So basically you wanna take the leather, tie it on. So since this is kind of my area that I was like, I'm not a huge fan of it, I'm gonna hide that in a little bit. So I'm gonna use that same spot and start my process. So again, just a simple overhand knot. Get it nice and tight. And the thing with leather, you don't wanna always pull side by side like this too much because you're putting a lot of tension in one area. So kind of slide it and squeeze it and then pull mm -hmm. a little bit more. Okay. That will help you out a lot. So, mm -hmm. And then from here, we're just gonna basically make a pattern. So right now I think, let me add some beads on here in whatever pattern. I like the crazy design sometimes, just put them wherever they decide to land. Hey, Michelle, someone, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Lois Becker asked if you gl use glue. If She said, did you glue your cord where you cut it? I assume she means where you first started adding it to the... Um, yeah, to the so in this case, I did not glue at any of my knots. Um, mm. You can, and I would highly suggest you do. With the Dreamcatcher, it's not under a lot of tension, so it's not going to come undone Move. as easy, right. but I would still just do it just for um, security reasons. Um, I like to use like a Loctite gel, a control gel. It works great with leather. Oh, so that's I would good to know. Like yeah, it's we a great... Use, um... We've used uh, super new glue a lot with our leather, but it's uh, I do like a gel config uh, a gel consistency. So um, it's good to know that the Loctite gel works. Yes, the Loctite gel is one of my favorites, and actually we sell that as well. So Julie, if you want to look for that link, you can put it up there, or I'll put it up later. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been putting your links up. Okay, thanks. And so yeah, I'm just throwing on a few beads onto the leather cord here. Um, just any, like I said, any way you kind of want to do it, they're going to land wherever they decide to land. And let me add two more here. And that's what I also love about this piece. It fits perfectly on, on our one millimeter cord. So Aha. no need to. And if you ever have problems with leather um, fitting on a, on who a bead or anything of that nature. If it seems like it might fit, but it's going to be a little tight, you can always angle cut the edge. Um, right, that's one of my favorite edge. tricks. Yeah, so just at a slight angle, make a little point, and that helps feed it on. And then if you continue to have a problem, um, it's either the leather's too big, <laughs> or you can also try twisting the bead on. That helps get it um, fed onto the leather cording. Mm -hmm. So where was I, I have actually um, sometimes done the super glue trick too, where you put a little glue on the end of your fiber or your leather just mm -hmm. to stiffen it. That's a great idea too. Yes. yes. All right, let me move back here. Sorry, I have those restless legs. They just don't want to stay still. Mm -hmm. All right, so from here, I'm just going to feed one of my beads up, maybe two, who knows? I'll do one this time. So just kind of throw that up there and then you'll take it in whichever direction you want, but I'm gonna come over this way and then you do, if I'm, okay, back in screen here, um, take it over the top and then feed all your cording back through the big loop and try not to lose all your beads, which I'm not paying attention, of course. And then you wanna take it on the back side here. So you're basically coming in, um, through this in between part right here. Mm -hmm. I use technical words very well. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so it looks like a mess right now, but once you get it all the way fed through, hmm, you know what, one second here, let me get myself a little more organized. I don't have much space to Mm -hmm. to maneuver in here, which is making it a little bit more difficult. So that is the trick with when you get your like live streaming yeah. setup. You, it ends up being well, I don't know, maybe for other people they've got a better setup, but it better ends up system. being a little cramped. Yeah. yeah, that's seems to always be my issue. I'm trying to get the perfect setup, but 
I don't do enough of these, so I need to probably practice a bit more. So as you can see, it's kind of done this loop around and come back this way. So then you just want to kind of pull that down. So that's going to create that tension mark right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can just kind of say, okay, I'm going to come down to this area. Or is that too long? No, that looks good to me. And then you can kind of adjust accordingly. So again, I'm going to loop around and then over. It feels like this can kind of be a very organic process. You can... It is 100% organic. The big thing is to make sure that one thing I struggled with at the beginning in doing it was um, making sure there's enough tension on the leather so that you're uh -huh. not having a lot of sag in the leather. So then I'm gonna pull that back over. See where my cards are going there. Bring that leather through, oops. Punch your camera, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so then see, we kind of have another little point there of tension. I think I'm going to bring it back up and I'll do this part a little quicker just to kind of get us to where we need to be at because there's a few more steps we want to show. So then again, I'm going to bring it here. Yeah. And our, and our, our time frame is not strict. So if okay. we go over, that's fine. As long as everybody can hang out and keep watching. All right. Well, I they might have does. us. They might have us on a tight schedule, but we're not on a tight uh, schedule. <laughs> we're not on a tight schedule. That's wonderful. <laughs> As you can see, I'm kind of have a pattern already developing. I think nice. At this point, I will. And see, if I want to go, if I want to take it back to this level, at this point, I don't have that loop going on, so that's just going to make the cord go up and down. So mm -hmm. what I need to do is take it the opposite direction. So that'll stay in place. It will help lock it into place. So again, that ah. is the, probably one of the most important things that you do mm -hmm. is to make sure it locks itself in place. So Sam Michelle. is saying camera punches just mean you're passionate about making the That's piece. What just <laughs> you know what? I love that. You know, I'm one of my hobbies is boxing, so I- ah, That's that. right, I knew that about you. Um, yeah. I, I punch my camera usually at least once too. I didn't do it this time though. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You're becoming an expert. I think that's what that means. <laughs> Maybe. So I'm going to go that way. And what I'm going to do is make enough room in the center. I'm not going to go too crazy. You can go as many times in any direction you want. Mm -hmm. but I'm going to make enough room in the center because I'm going to hang one of the charms in the center. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So we'll show you that process here shortly. Let me go here. I'll wrap that that way. And then, of course, you'll clean up all your little loose ties here and there once you're ready for that. Um, later, yeah. Later at the end, yes. When everything comes together. Slide that bead into place. I got too many beads in one area. Let's see here. Um, so this is our, Julie, is this our fourth live stream, regular one, since we kind of so. started a since we started our regular schedule? Third or fourth? I think fourth. I believe yeah. you. <laughs> um, I got to say, it's really fun when you, we have a guest. It, may, it just makes it, it's like hanging out with a friend. It's really nice. I like being on with you guys too. I like being able to communicate while doing these designs with somebody. So yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> a little making party. Yes. Sam's being a comedian. He punched his too hard on his oh. <laughs> That was a case of bad timing. <laughs> All right. So I think, let's see, let's go down this way. And see, that's the other thing. You can also loosen up slightly mm -hmm. in your loops here. So that's why I don't like to add glue quite yet. Mm -hmm. Because I can loosen it up slightly in the middle and feed this cord. Ah. Oh. Make sure Make a it's spot for where it. you want it first. Mm -hmm. It's all about the tension. <clears throat> and then kind of feed it in that. You know, I just love this project. Oh, well, thank I, you, Julie. Watching you make it is so much fun to see something that you just have no idea how it's going to turn out. 
<laughs> or do you? I'd love to hear that. You know, I think I'm going to actually go further down this time. Yeah, I'm going to go right about here. All right, and then this needs to tighten back up. So really don't want to, again, I'm going to emphasize it one more time. You don't want to lose that, um, that tension you have. So just kind of hold it in place. If there's anything that's starting to come undone, like I have over here, mm -hmm. just let it go for the time being. This is more important. So mm -hmm. you can fix it later. Exactly. <clears throat> So let me grab one of these guys. Put that on. And I'm going to end it up here. Lois is very happy because she never knew how to make one of these. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, I'm just learning myself. So the great thing is, I think the beauty of it, I should say, is it is just 100% uniquely yours so have fun mm -hmm. with it that is always the key is having fun with it so mm -hmm. I kind of ended it at that spot I think that's where I feel comfortable with it now I can kind of determine what needs to be tightened up here which this guy needs to be tightened up a bit I don't know why I call leather guys but whatever uh, I do that all the time <laughs> It works for me. What can I uh, say? All right. So I tighten I'm always up. like, these guys got to go here and this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, if you have one that's kind of like loose, like I have right up here, this guy's kind of moving a little bit. I'm going to just keep on pulling him. And then you can kind of divot the, the wire slightly so that it's ah. in place. So that's why I kind of like using the wire better than even like the wood um, frames that they have pre-made you can get pre-made frames but I really like the way the wire comes together mm -hmm. so let me just make sure everybody's nice and tight in there I'll trim him off and then I'm going to trim right here all right so I'm going to get all my trimming done now and then at this point you would add your adhesive if you want to which I probably will for this one um, some of our leathers have a tendency to, they have like a coating. So we offer three different types of leather um, finishes on our round leather cord. One is our regular, one is our natural, and one is our um, metallic. Metallic and regular, which are these two. Um, the metallic just has a sheen to it. The regular, mm -hmm. just, both of them are top dyed. So they're dyed on the exterior of the leather mm -hmm. where the natural is absorbed more into the leather. So sometimes that catches a lot nicer um, mm -hmm. I did that on this piece here. That's all the natural, and it's holding its its shape. Nice. So, all right. Good. So now no, that's that's a good tidbit to know about uh, the different finishes of the leather. Yeah, for sure. All right. Let me clean up the mess so it's not distracting. So now you can just decide where you want this piece to be. So I just took. Again, it's a seashell. You guys have the technical name for it. <laughs> uh, we call that one our large scalloped pendant, I think. Large scalloped shell? It. Uh, it sounds no. good to me. Sounds good. <laughs> it's just, so it's our just... scalloped shell pendant. Scalloped shell, wonderful. <laughs> I'll go with <laughs> it. Um, so I just took that and did a lark's head knot at the top here and added another large pole bead through the top right there just to kind of put it into place. What I'm going to do is find where I want it to hang. I don't always think that it has to be in the center. I'm kind of, again, I love the organic feel of things. So I think I want it to go right about there. I think that's a nice spot. So I'm gonna either, you can tie it to the frame if you want it to over loop, or what I did was tied it to, um, on my other piece, I just tied it to, the leather itself. So mm -hmm. again, a simple knot is all it takes. Depending on how long, how far you want it to hang, you can decide that. So don't tighten your knot quite yet. Just kind of hold it in place right there and wait, wait for it. <laughs> 
And that's the thing with leather is, I mean, you can tie it in so many different ways and you can do all sorts of unique looks and designs with the way you knot leather or braid leather. So right. I just love the way it just like you can play with it. So right now I just had an idea in my head. Let's see if it comes together again, just making it up as I go here. Um, so again, I'm making a knot right there. And I think what I'm going to do is, let's see. That's going the opposite direction. So let me tie it this way. Because I want the tail end to go to the top. So let me just tie it. Do, 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 do. And then get yourself confused. That's what I like to do. And I need to go this way. All right. Go. So it's a little too loose there. So let me like loosen that up. Sliding my knot into place like that. So I just wanted like a little area right there where it's extended, and then I'll do the same on this side. And I'm sure my hand is covering everything. Yeah, we can, we get the gist. You get the gist of it? We All get right, the great. gist. <laughs> so then I just, you know, can see, I like the way that kind of hangs there. Uh-huh. Mm. I'm noticing a little bit of suede lace off to the side. I would, uh, that's coming I would be intrigued to try this um, design with um, a suede lace. Yeah, that's what I was originally going to do was suede. For the whole thing and then I was like you know I'm going to play with the round leather cord because I've never seen a round leather cord one before so I'm like let me do something different but yeah I think the suede would make it look great in the center there all right so I, I kind of like where those are at kind of hanging in place um, I'm going to end up creating that as my top all right so just kind of position everything where you want it make sure you're kind of comfortable with it make sure everything's secure then we'll cut Okay, so now we have our little charm there. Nice. Um, and then on my, on this one that I did, I offset the leather. So the top of it, if you can see there, the top is here mm. on the wire. And then I did the leather wraps on either side. Right. On this one, oh. I think I'm going to do the opposite. So, mm. right, and then you did use you used that suede lace was for your fringe too. I'm yes, reminded. So that's what I'm going to do next. Right. Yeah. So the suede lace you use as your fringe. Oops, as I'm punching my camera again. So again, it's just a lark head knot pattern here. So you can do as many or as few as you'd like. Um, basically, just know where your front and your back of your piece is. Uh, loop the leather, take it in half. So this is the suede, the flat suede lace in gray and loop it in half, go under your piece and then feed the tail ends through the loop you created. So you have this loop, take the tail ends through that loop and then tighten it down. So this is the backwards version. I should have mentioned that before I even started. Mm, so uh -huh. This is technically my back because I have this piece backwards right now. So I've been okay. kind of working on it backwards. I should have mentioned that. Um, and then I also have a little bit more of my, my knots exposed on the top side here. So I knew that this was the back side. Um, you could do the same pattern and depending on what you like, because some people like that type of look on the top. Mm -hmm. um, I, it just depends on my mood, but this is, you would do the same thing, but basically take the leather through the, or over through the top, creating the loop on the bottom, then feed the tails through. And then that's the type of yeah, look Yeah, just do it backwards. Oh, it might be fun to alternate. Yeah, it could. Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> and so with this one, I'm going to do a little bit different where I'm going to do um, six, of the, six pieces. I cut each one to about, I want to say they were 18 inches long. Um, and then again, because you're folding it in half, so I'm going to go over these loops that I've created. That's what I've just kind of want to play with the look where you see the round leather cord and then the suede and the round leather cord. So uh -huh. uh, I'll do that again here. 
I'm, notice, I'm noticing the beads on the cords and um, you know, they move of course, according to gravity. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if I could use a crimp, if I was to make one of these and wanted to position the beads in a certain place on that cord, mm -hmm. crimp, I'll bet I could put a crimp cover over the cord right below where I want the bead to sit and I'll bet that would hold it. You know, honestly, that's a great idea. Yeah. I don't think I've ever tried that before, but yeah, that's a great well, idea. You know, the necklace I'm wearing, that's how I finished the bottoms to hold the buttons in place is I just wrapped it. I put a crimp, cor uh, crimp cover on them. Oh, neat. That's a great idea, actually. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to play with that because I, I kind of liked, you know, they will stop at, once they mm -hmm. hit the next cord unless right. they're, it's not, there's not enough tension. Right. Um, but I kind of, I think the idea of having them in place, especially like the large hole beads, this is two millimeter inside diameter, I think 2.2 mm -hmm. or 2.5. So you only have a one millimeter cord going through it. These have yeah. more tension on them. They won't move uh -huh. much. So it really depends on the beads that you're using. So Could be a fun thing to play with though. Fun idea. Definitely, definitely. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And what I'm gonna do is Get these all on here and then i'm going to attach one more piece before i do my final loop at the top and you know as you're putting them on these will start loosening up a bit just tighten them once you're done with all of them mm -hmm. I'm just gonna keep them. and i'm creating a little gap here um which i'll show you in a second actually let me finish this process Now, by suggesting you alternate them, I just complicated the process for you, huh? Yes, you did, but it's okay. <laughs> sorry, you're about making that. me I'm think. <laughs> I like to think. Either follow Tracy's lead or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. Well, you know what? I'll probably go back and fix these according yeah, to the later. way I like them later. Um, there's the design process, and then there's the finesse process. And I'm missing one cord. Oh no, so I'll cut another one here. I thought I cut enough. And yeah. It's always also more difficult with the, you know, having your camera on above you and Mm -hmm. I'm used to having things like right in my face <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm designing like up as close as possible. I'm also a little bit blind, so that might be part of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right, let's adjust those knots and you adjust them just by pulling on the tails and sliding this base up into mm -hmm. place. So, and I wanted three on either side. I want to gap them according to you know, whatever kind of natural gap I want to put there, but make sure that they're even mm -hmm. um, just so they look nice. They lay, lay nicely together. And then let's see, that guy is in place. And that crisscrossed itself, but there we go. Let's move him over. There we go. And then nice. again, make sure they're all laying nicely. I really do like the palette of that one. Yeah, isn't it nice? It it's comes fresh. together nicely. Mm -hmm. It is. And then the theme that I went with, you will see shortly, is I took, I pre-made this because I'm not very good at doing um, loops or um, what are they called again? <laughs> Wrap loops? <laughs> Wrap loops, or just loops in general. So I don't like to show them because it's kind of hard for me to actually show yeah, them. That's okay. <laughs> so I pre-made this. I used um, Dakota Stones. This I think the same one you used again, Tracy. The uh, Amethyst? Oh, yeah, yeah, the Amethyst, the matte one. I think you used that on the test or the... the I did. Yeah. I did. And then I just did two of those with um, a Jesse James bead in the center. And then the Little Mermaid from Tierra Cat. Aw, that's and so perfect for the theme. I thought so too. And then I just stamped to the sea, which I think is backwards on your screen, I'm sure. But no, it's actually it's actually right. It is on my yeah. up here. It looks backwards. Oh, that's great. 
Um, so yeah, I just put to this to the sea on there and just kind of the idea of, you know, I'm, I'm ready for beach weather right now. Right. And then did, <laughs> did you glue some little flat bag crystals on there? I did. Nice touch. I did. And I, I, I would love to tell you what colors they are, but, um, but that's okay. Nice. I'll touch. give you the generic purple, pink, and teal. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good. All right. So then I'm going to take another piece of brown leather cord here. Um, so just left over from what I, when I did this portion, cut that guy, I'd probably say about four or five inches. And then what I'm going to do here is feed a piece of, or um, Dakota stones. I want to, I can't remember the name of this particular stone, but it's kind of iridescent. I just love Ooh, this pretty. one. Um, so what I'm going to do before I do that, I'm sorry, is string this piece on to the leather and I'm basically going to be hanging it off of that leather. Oh that's what you were saving the center for. Yes yeah. and then um, you can use a jump ring if you feel more comfortable with the jump ring. I like to use leather. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll just pull that down to create like a little loop there. You can kind of see and it doesn't have to be perfect in place or you can knot it if you feel more comfortable with that. And then I'm gonna take this and tie it on to the ring. And you know what? I think I wanna do a different type of knot. Yes, I'm gonna take this instead of an a, a overhead knot like that, I'm gonna do it this way. And then this is also where you can kind of, I'll show you how to slide your knots into place. Again, for leather, you don't want to tug on both sides. You want to slide it. So as mm -hmm. I'm pulling here, I'm going to use my fingers. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And slide the knot and down. Nudge it down. Mm -hmm. And that just, you know, it, it, it relieves some of that stress on the leather. So let me just pull that there. And again, you're adjusting it. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way, but you guys get the idea. There yeah. we go. There you go. So now that's in place. And again, I can open up my little loops here slightly, land that in there, and then tighten that back up. Fun. Yep. And then so that's done. Put that there. And I'm just going to leave slight tail. I don't want a big tail, just a little one, just like that. And so there you have it. And then at the top, so we have our base here with the, you can always cut these um, at various lengths. You can chevron mm -hmm. cut them. I like to chevron cut just so it has that nice angle at the bottom. Right. And then at the top, you can basically play with how you want it to hang. Um, I'm just going to take one piece of this leather and what I was going to do, which I don't think we have enough time at this point, but I was going to wrap this leather all the way down and then create my loop and then wrap it to finish it mm -hmm. off. But mm -hmm. for now, we'll just tie that on. Yeah, if you finish this um, and do that, um, maybe just share a picture with us um, and we'll yeah. we'll add it to the stream. I mean, we'll add it to the comment thread and people can see the finished. Okay, definitely. Yeah. I can do that. So yeah, basically that's what you do and you just add your loop to the top and you can dangle a few large hole beads off of that if you'd like, which I'll take a final picture once that's all done and you're mm -hmm. all set. Fun. Yeah. I like Are there it. any more questions out there for, for me? Yeah, I think Julie's watching them. I am seeing them, but I'm not seeing them in a timely fashion. So. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, let, me, let me bring us both, both back up. That was fun, Michelle. I liked it. Awesome. Great. So darn crafty. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> In the spirit so, of the month. <laughs> Michelle, at one point you um, were talking about knotting your leather in different ways of knotting. And I was reminded of this that you gave me. Oh, at yay. One of the True Blue shows a few years ago. It was, mm -hmm. at, it was after the Dulce Vita launch because these are the little Dulce Vita um, mm -hmm barrel beads and you had made this I don't know what that particular knot is called but it's just so beautiful I think you still had me on uh, you might want to show that again because I think you had me still on spot like I um, could be wrong though no I uh, think Julie who do you see 
Well, I didn't see it till just now. Okay, who do you see both um, Michelle and I? I sure do. Okay, okay great. so they hopefully yeah. they're not. But just that such a little... one of my favorite ones to make. It's so much yeah. fun. And I've seen you do earrings with that knot too. Mm -hmm. Actually, fun. I'm wearing them today. Oh, are you? Cool. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. Oh, I thought oh. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you were and changed your mind last I minute. I did. I, I had them in and I took them right back out. Oh, bummer. <laughs> Well, I suppose we should let people go. We yep. we came in at like an hour and 12 minutes, so that's not too bad. Not too bad. That's great so, for two projects. Oh, but we have we have um, a design prompt yes, and and um, po potential for winning uh, giveaways from both um, Tierra Cast and Leather Cord USA. Yeah. What did we decide was our design prompt? Tassel on. So tassel hashtag on. tassel okay. on. Hashtag tassel on. So the way this is working, you guys, if you're um, Mojo 2 group members, then um, you want to create a design or you actually don't have to make one. It can be something you already have um, featuring leather and um, you can post that in the Mojo 2 group with the hashtag tassel on. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be watching for those posts over the next, um, through Monday. I think we decided Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific time will be mm -hmm. our cutoff. And um, we'll look at all, watch all the posts as they're coming through and see what people have come up with. And after that cutoff time, we'll um, choose a winner of a price package of leather cord and TR cast products. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, so Tassel On creates some fun stuff. Um, you know, de mm -hmm. definitely include tear cast pieces into it with leather. Um, again, if you have stuff that you've already made, it doesn't have to be a tassel, but if you have tassels. Uh, tassel really or cool fringe, maybe. Fringe, we'll fly. fringe is good, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, anything, and we just love to see what you guys have made, and so yeah. please share with us. But we again, we really want to see it have t both tear cast and leather cord products, mm -hmm. so. So definitely. Well, cool. Michelle, this was fun. Thank you so much, Tracy. And um, yeah, let's do this again soon. Do it again. Okay. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. And um, uh, we're looking forward to see your tassel on designs in the Mojo 2 group. And um, we'll see you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.